Hello my friends. If you watch this video, you will definitely understand why both magnetic rams and magnetic motors cannot generate energy by themselves. What you are looking at is a simulated magnetic ram similar to the SMOT, the simple magnetic over unity toy. The SMOT was patented by Emil T. Hartmann in the 1980s but didn't change the world drastically, although it should be able to harvest energy from magnetism. For this purpose, the magnetic ram should be able to accelerate a magnetic ball and then release it from the magnetic field. The prerequisite for this is a hole at the end of the ram through which the ball falls down due to the attraction of gravity. As you can see, I placed a magnet behind an eraser on a seesaw at the end of the ramp to allow the ball to be transferred at the point of maximum speed into the lane for return to the beginning of the ramp. Here, too, gravity supports exit. The magnetic ball now has enough energy to return to the starting point on its own. Energy is thus gained, because friction must be taken into account as energy loss. If we look at the SMOT without my extension, it should look something like this. The magnets on the sides approach each other at the highest point, so that's where the highest magnetic field is. The magnetic ball rolls up the ramp and falls over the edge back to the ground. Sounds easy. Might work, doesn't it? Let's take a different look at the magnetic field. Ok, that's actually not possible because it's invisible. But with a trick, we see it anyway. We think of the magnetic field as a gravitational field and now look at attraction and repulsion as dips and hills. The hollow in the glass block shown represents the attractive force that exists between the magnetic fields. The marble sphere represents the impact of those forces. The poles of the magnets are identified by the colors red and blue with red representing the north pole and blue representing the south pole. Different poles attract each other, like poles repel each other. In our example, a lateral displacement of the magnets against each other results in the ball actively rolling up out of the cavity. Force must be used for this, because the ball wants to roll back into the hollow. Even if it's a material such as iron or steel that doesn't normally have a magnetic field around, but it's magnetic. A hollow is created because a magnetic attraction takes place. This is shown here by the steel ball. If we bring like poles closer together, the opposite effect results. A hill is formed and the marble ball wants to roll down. The magnets want to avoid each other. In our representation, no distinction is made between several magnetic fields that affect the same object, in this case the sphere. It's all about the total force impact. When a non-magnetic force tries to lift an object out of the magnetic field, it shows up by lifting the marble sphere. The ball wants to continue to follow gravity and falls into the hollow. In addition, our representation only ever depicts the strongest magnetic force, as can be seen when the sphere decides to stick to a random magnet. Now, we transfer our new gravitational magnetic field to the magnetic ramp. Above, we see the magnetic sphere in the ascending ramp and below the marble sphere symbolizing the magnetic effect. As already seen, a pit appears when the magnetic ball is in the attraction of the ram's magnets. The magnetic ball rolls to the point of greatest attraction, the marble ball to the lowest point. Let's add another row to the ram's magnets. These magnets are slightly closer together and therefore have a greater magnetic effect. And again, the ball rolls into the area of greatest attraction, closer to the second row of magnets. Now 
Let's add the rest of the magnets to the ramp. Each row has a slightly stronger magnetic field than the one before it. As expected, the balls roll over the end of the ramp. And with a magnetic ball you might expect it to shoot over it or fall down if the ramp ended under it. But once we look at the deep hollow below the magnetic ball, we see the marble ball trapped in it, symbolizing the attraction to the magnets to the magnetic ball. It should be clear that it would take enormous amounts of energy to propel the ball out of the maximum magnetic field. Force it uphill. If we look at the SMOT again, the effect on the magnetic ball would be more like this. By the way, everyone who tries to build a magnetic ramp in the real world has this experience made. Me too. When you say, it's just all two dimensional, the real world has three dimensions. Then I can confirm that, but as you can see here, unfortunately, I have to point out that this doesn't not result in any significant changes. So, I can only hope that this presentation has shed some light on the world of magnetic miracle generators. Even if it is a pity that the magnetic field cannot be used so easily to generate energy free of charge, there are still endless possibilities of how one can outsmart the universe. Who knows what will happen next. Thank you for watching this video. There are still some more cool videos on my channel. Subscribe if you dare. Thanks and have fun.